Let's get right into it. Number 9. The Appendix Appendix is like the kid picked last in gym class. It's there, but no one really knows what to do with it. Back in the day, our ancestors were munching on leaves, bark, and whatever else they could find in the wild. In those days, the appendix might have helped them digest all that tough plant matter. But now that we've upgraded to pizza, ice cream, and all those delicious processed food, the appendix is just kind of twiddling its thumbs. In fact, the appendix is so useless that when it gets inflamed, doctors just yank it out, and you can live a perfectly normal life without it. So, what's the future looking like for the appendix? Well, it's already on its way out. In some populations, up to one in five people are born without it. Imagine a future where no one has an appendix, no more midnight trips to the emergency room, no more scars from appendectomies, just a smooth, uninterrupted life, free from the threat of a rogue organ. Number 8. Toes. Now you might be thinking, hey, I use my toes to pick up socks from the floor and to look cool in flip-flops. But here's the thing. As humans, we're not really giving our toes the workout they used to get back in the day. Our ancestors needed strong, grippy toes for climbing trees and chasing down their weekly groceries in the wild. But nowadays, the most action our toes see is when we stub them on the coffee table. So, scientists think that over a really, really long time, our toes might just get shorter and less useful. We're talking way into the future, so don't start throwing out your sneakers just yet. But with the way we walk and run, the big toe is doing most of the heavy lifting. And it's not just about not needing to swing from tree to tree anymore. Our fancy shoes are keeping our feet so cozy and supported. Our little toes are getting lazier by the generation. So, you will not see humans turning into toeless beings in your lifetime. But one day, way down the line, our descendants might look at pictures of our feet and wonder why we had all these mini fingers on our feet. Number 7. The Jacobson's Organ Did you know humans have a secret superpower? We can detect pheromones. Well, sort of. We have this little organ in our nose called the Jacobson's organ. Its whole job is to detect pheromones, which are like the secret language of attraction in the animal kingdom. Now, before you get too excited, our Jacobson's organ is pretty much defunct. Imagine having a top-secret spy gadget, but the batteries are dead, and the warranty expired a million years ago. That's basically what we're dealing with here. But back in the day, when our ancestors were still rocking the caveman look, this little organ was probably a pretty big deal. It might have helped them pick up on subtle scents that signaled things like, hey, I'm fertile, or back off, I'm angry. But as we evolved and got smarter, we started relying more on our other senses, like sight and hearing. We figured out that it's probably easier to just ask someone out on a date rather than trying to sniff out their pheromones. In fact, some people are born without a Jacobson's organ altogether, and guess what? They're doing just fine. It's not like they're walking around wondering why they can't smell love in the air. And even for those of us who do have this little organ, it's not exactly in tip-top shape. It's like having a rusty old car that's been sitting in your garage for decades. Sure, it's there, but it's not going to get you very far. So, while our furry friends are busy sniffing each other and picking up on all sorts of interesting pheromones, we're stuck relying on Tinder bios and awkward first dates. Number 6. The Erector Peely Muscle Ever get those goosebumps when you're cold? Yeah. Those tiny bumps on your skin are the erector peely muscles at work. But here's the deal. They're about as useful to us now as a comb is to a bald man. Back in the day, when our ancestors were rocking some serious full-body fur, these little muscles were pretty useful. Imagine a caveman facing off against a saber-toothed tiger. Suddenly, his erector peely spring into action, making his hair stand up like he's just been electrocuted. The tiger takes one look and thinks, Whoa, this guy means business and backs off. So, the erector pili is on the evolutionary chopping block. As humans continue to evolve, these muscles are getting weaker and less common. Who knows, generations down the line, getting goosebumps might just be a cool thing our grandkids read in history ebooks. Number 5. The Tailbone This little bone at the bottom of our spine is a leftover from our ancient ancestors who actually had tails. Now, you might be thinking, why do I have this useless bone just sitting there at the bottom of my spine? Well, it's not entirely useless. It does serve as an attachment point for some muscles and ligaments, but it's not exactly pulling its weight anymore. Back in the day, our ancestors used their tails for balance, communication, and maybe even for swatting away bugs. As we evolved and started walking upright, the tail gradually disappeared. Now, it's just a small reminder of our evolutionary past. Sometimes, very rarely, babies are born with a vestigial tail. This is a small, fleshy growth that contains no bone. 
It's just tissue and blood vessels. It's usually removed surgically after birth. Number 4. The Palmaris Longus Muscle This little guy is like the appendix of your arm. It's just hanging out there, not really doing much. In fact, about 14% of people don't even have it. So, what does this muscle do? Well, it's supposed to help with wrist flexion, which is just a sciency way of saying it helps you bend your wrist. But your other arm muscles are already doing a pretty good job at that. The Palmaris Longus is just taking up space. Now, why do we have this useless muscle? Well, blame evolution. Our monkey ancestors probably used it a lot when they were swinging from tree to tree. But unless you're planning on giving up your smartphone and moving into the jungle, you probably don't need it anymore. In fact, doctors have already started using the Palmaris Longus in surgeries. If someone needs a tendon replacement, surgeons can just yoink out this muscle and use it without causing any harm. It's like having a spare tire in your arm. Number 3. Wisdom Teeth These guys show up late to the party, around the ages of 17 to 25, so there's usually no room left for them. That's why they cause a lot of problems, like pushing your other teeth around to make room for themselves. Our ancestors needed these extra chompers to grind down plant tissue, raw meat, and whatever else they could forage, because they weren't dining on smoothies and soft-serve ice cream like us. Plus, they were losing teeth faster than a hockey player, so having a few spares popping up in adulthood was pretty handy. But today our diets have gone through a major overhaul. We're cooking our food, cutting it into bite-sized pieces, and frankly, we're babying our teeth so much that we don't really need these evolutionary leftovers anymore. Our jaws have gotten smaller too, because we're not spending all day chewing tough foods, which means there's even less room for our wisdom teeth. So these days more and more people are being born without wisdom teeth. Number 2. The Auricular Muscles you know how some animals, like cats and dogs, can move their ears to listen for sounds? Well, humans have muscles for that, too. They're called the auricular muscles, and they're the reason why some people can wiggle their ears. But most of us can't actually use these muscles. Scientists think that our ancestors might have used these muscles to help them locate sounds in the wild. But as we evolved, we started relying more on our eyes and less on our ears. Now, the auricular muscles are pretty much just vestigial, which is a fancy way of saying they're useless. So why do some people still have the ability to wiggle their ears? It could be genetic, or maybe they just practiced a lot in front of the mirror. In fact, there's even a world record for the fastest ear wiggler. A man named Alanov Martin Baiju from India can wiggle his ears an impressive 99 times in 30 seconds. That's faster than most people can blink. Number 1. The Sinuses So you know how we have these air-filled cavities in our skulls called sinuses? We're not entirely sure why we have them. Some scientists think they're there to humidify the air we breathe, like a built-in facial sauna. Others believe they make our skulls lighter, so we don't topple over from the weight of our big brains. And some of them believe they might play a role in our immune system by producing mucus to trap bacteria and other germs we breathe in. But for most of us, the only time we even think about our sinuses is when they get infected and cause us pain. So, what's the evolutionary future of our sinuses? Well... Some researchers think they might be slowly disappearing. In fact, a study found that people with smaller sinuses tend to have fewer sinus infections. But don't start celebrating just yet. Even if our sinuses do disappear, it's going to take a really long time. We're talking thousands and thousands of years. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.